Okay, so let's continue our talk on urban planning, but we're now gonna go even into more detail. And now we're gonna talk about zoning. So zoning is how almost all towns, cities, and any kind of developed area in the United States has zoning. Zoning forms the basis of where we live. And you can see here in this picture is uh, Wilshire Boulevard, Boulevard in uh, Los Angeles. So you can see that along the boulevard, there is this allowance for very dense buildings, but immediately after the boulevard, there's very little density. So what that means then is that the zoning along the boulevard allows for high density or very tall buildings. And uh, right off the boulevard, the density decreases rapidly. So there's no, there's very low density allowed off of the boulevard. And so zoning is really this kind of way to regulate land use. And land is divided into different types of zones. And these zones are given things that they can do or not do. So developers could either build a 50-story apartment building on a particular plot of land or a single family home. Zoning is what tells you what you can build on a particular type of land. So this map is actually a map of a city in California. And so you can see here, this is the zoning map for the city of Carpinteria, California. And you can see that they have different types of zoning. So the first is the industrial zoning is this kind of pink and purple. And that is kind of over in this area. Um, you can also see some over here as well. Then you have commercial. So you have these commercial areas, which are kind of the uh, red and coral colors. So there's commercial over here, some commercial over here, and then some commercial over here. You then have residential, which you'll know there's a lot of different residential types, which is really important because residential zoning is very, very regulated. And you can see here that the type of thing you can build on a residential lot is very specifically regulated, which is very true in most US cities. So you can see here, they have single family homes, they have apartments over here, they have some more single family homes up in this area. So you can really see that there is a broad segregation of the different types of uses. There's a lot of residential north of the freeway. There's much less residential south of the freeway and the residential that is south of the freeway is usually apartment buildings or some kind of mix of apartment and commercial. And then you can also see that the city has some other types of districts which are agricultural, recreation, and community facility. So the community facility can be things like schools, agricultural is just agricultural, and the recreation districts are things like parks. So zoning has kind of these many faceted things in many different pieces, but you can see really clearly when you're looking at a map of zoning that it's very prescriptive. It really tells you what you can and cannot build in a city. So zoning um, kind of becomes at first telling you whether you can build residential, industrial, or commercial, and then it gets more specific. And then it tells you, you can only build buildings of a certain height here, and you can only have a certain sized home here. It can even get as specific as telling businesses, you cannot sell alcohol in this specific commercial zone. Um, and it's really important to note that zoning is often used by residents to exclude people of color and lower income people. And part of the reason for this is that if you have a lot of single family homes in a community, um, it's much more difficult for people of color and lower income residents to move into that community. And the reason for that um, is because the history in the United States of systematic racism and discrimination where 
people of color were not allowed to accumulate the same amount of wealth that white individuals were. And because of this, that means that people of color and lower income residents are not able to move into these single family homes and they're unable to afford moving into those areas. And so because of that, single family zoning is one way that communities can discriminate against people of color and lower income residents. So there's been kind of this movement though to fix some of the problems with zoning, um, to make it less discriminatory and less racist. So part of that is the idea of new urbanism. So new urbanism is the idea that we kind of want to have mixed use. We want to have commercial buildings in the same area. We want to have apartments and we want those to be available to a broad section of the population. And so one way we do that is through having um, a certain number of apartments or units in a building um, affordable. So in New York, there are a lot of developments that will have between 10 and 30% of the units set aside to be affordable. In these kind of communities, uh, the new urbanism and neo-traditional communities, they really try to promote four different things. Um, so they really try to promote walkability. They have small lots that are clustered together and the homes are really close to the lot line. So they're not really far back removed from the street. And then they also have very narrow streets. Another kind of thing that those new, new urbanism or neo-traditional communities do is they try to functionally integrate zones. So like I mentioned, they have commercial, offices, residential, all in the same space. And they really try to have a diverse group of residents in the community. So diverse in the sense of racial groups, but also diverse in the sense of socioeconomic groups. So they really want to try to have all residents living in the same community together to have it be a very actually diverse community. So part of the kind of the, the reason for zoning uh, or the reason why zoning came about was because they wanted to manage the growth of cities. And zoning really came about in the 1910s. Uh, the first really comprehensive zoning was in New York City in 1916. And it was in response to very large, tall buildings being built. And so why they wanted to manage growth was because large swath of, of the city were being completely shut out from sunlight. So they implemented this setback system where buildings had to have kind of chunks taken out of them so the sun could shine down onto the street. Other areas uh, do things like growth boundaries. So in Lexington, Kentucky, they actually have a growth boundary. So basically you are not allowed to receive sewer services from the city or water services outside of that growth boundary. The growth boundary basically limits any sort of non-agricultural development outside of the boundary. Another way that they try to preserve and manage growth is through open spaces. So open spaces are kind of these parcels that are set aside to allow for nature to continue to exist in new developments. And that is it for urban planning and zoning. Thank you.